Bakum online. I see we have um, about half of our participants, but uh, because we've got quite a tight schedule ahead, we're going to um, crack on. Thank you very much for uh, attending and joining us on this next um, online offering. Uh, we're very pleased uh, to have Mac, our founder at Embercoom, joining us. Um, and Cindy, the, the, the Zoom whiz who's uh, holding the tech space, thank you very much. And uh, my name is Nusha, I'm new to the team, and uh, we're very pleased to have Fiona Shaw joining us uh, in a uh, and facilitating an, an online ceremony, which is uh, very exciting. So we're all happy that you're here joining us. And um, please make sure your uh, microphones are on mute uh, during the talk and ceremony, please, just to avoid any uh, unnecessary feedback. We would really appreciate it. And uh, which, without much further ado, um, over to you, Mac. Thanks, Nusha. Uh, hello, everyone. Really good to be back here again in this uh, virtual space that we shared last week and running again now. Um, and uh, understanding that uh, perhaps many of you are uh, inside uh, in your homes and places with perhaps rather limited and restricted access outside. But I just wanted to refer to this incredibly beautiful, sunny and even warm day that we're having today. So in thanks and gratitude for that. About um, four or five weeks ago, uh, we held a program here at Embercoom called Creating Ceremony. And it was myself and Fiona and, uh, and Harrod Wynn who were sort of uh, leading on that program. And it was almost, but not quite, the last program that we ran here before uh, the lockdown. I think the journey followed the, fo the week after Creating Ceremony, but then that was it. So it was really in, in the last few days. And we, we had a powerful and very beautiful time together with the group that came as we explored uh, what ceremony is and looked through the three different lenses of how we might uh, explore and hold ceremony and bring it into our lives. Um, and at that time it was the first time that I'd met Fiona, though I had heard uh, about her work previously. Um, and had a really d lovely experience of uh, sort of uh, witnessing and participating because I held some part of a ceremony that she brought and, and enjoying immensely being sort of working within the guidance that she was providing. So I'm really glad that she's been able to join us this week and um, we thought that we would uh, basically bring two parts to this. One would be just me, I suppose, uh, interviewing, but I think it's more just a conversation really with Fiona about the journey that she's made to where she is now and a little bit about the path that she's um, um, on and the ceremonies that she, or the, the way, if you like, that she's holding. Um, I think that was it. So welcome, Fiona. I'm looking to my right because that's where I see you. But welcome. Very glad you could be with us. And I would, um, it would be great if you could perhaps, if we could open with you sharing to us all a little bit about how you found your way onto the pathway that you're currently walking. Hello, Mac. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Nice to work with you again or be alongside you. Um, so my path is uh, called the Red Path. Its um, other name is the Sacred Fire of Itsachi Latlan. And um, I met this path about 36, 26 years ago when I was 30. And it was by accident in some way, and I just found myself in a, in a ceremony and um, I didn't really know what I was expecting. Um, 
but my my experience was very profound. I wasn't searching. I think that's what I want to say. I wasn't searching, but I went to that ceremony and I really felt like I had come home to something that in some way I remembered. And on reflection, I think what I loved about it was the level of honoring and the prayer that came as song and in word. It was a very long ceremony. It went through the whole night. There was a fire in the center. We were all in circle. We were on the ground. We were under the stars. And it just felt very normal and also very profound. And the honoring of the water, of the fire, of the new day, of the night, it just moved me deeply. And within a very short space of time, I went off to Vision Quest. And um, really just, it, it's continued from then. I came, I, I brought many people to come to Vision Quest to join us. And then eventually the chief of this lineage said that uh, it was time to give me the blessing to hold the altars because he couldn't travel here all the time. And what's really important to mention about this is the intention of offering this altar, which is, um, was, is unusual to give it to a woman and to a Western woman, white woman, was with the prayer that we, through the ancient altar that had been held through that lineage, would remember our own connection with the earth, with our own prayers and our own songs. And so that is the, the dreaming of the chief of this line, that there would be a fire, the original fire in all lands, particularly interestingly for this time, because the prophecy says there would be a time when people would be on their knees and they would be looking to see who, pe who could stand up and they'd be looking for spaces where they could go, where they could be held and they could pray and they could um, connect. So in some sense, I now feel that this has been a training um, for these times. And um, I guess the other bit that I always like to include is that I'm a midwife. And that's in a way my, almost like my first, well, it's not, it's woven in with this path and that I sit on the, on the line between death and life and um, very sacred place to be, but that really somewhere has informed this, my work on this path. And I think this path has informed my work as a midwife. That was a very long answer. <laughs> oh, thank you. I mean, um... It does really does feel in many ways that being a midwife encompasses both. Uh, yeah. you, you are, as it were, um, holding the birth of, much, that, of a great deal. Yes. I think that's the feeling that I have. And mm. uh, it's sometimes the, the, the thing that I love about my path is it, it comes with teachings, but it's not oral. I mean, it's oral, oral it's not written. Mm. And so it's about paying attention to signals, particularly in nature, the seasons and the rhythms and what nature can teach us. And I feel like uh, working as a midwife is similar. So you need to pay attention to all the little signals and stay still to create a space of welcome and honor and care and tenderness um, and all that's beyond, all that's in the mystery. So somewhere I think they're very similar. Mm. I'm intrigued by the fact that you said that, um, um, was it you found yourself in a cer ceremony and you weren't searching? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yet I, I can only imagine that to have even found yourself in the ceremony, you were attracted or, or think that you were already in some way in conversation with our Mother Earth. Would that be, would that be so? Oh, totally. I think, um, yeah, I, I've been searching since I'm very young for the place where I could be with the divine, with, with the earth and 
and feel that connection. And I think somewhere along the line, I lost it probably at boarding school. Mm -hmm. And um, I was living in a teepee around a fire when I met this tradition. I'd, I'd explored other things. Um, I was on a search as a nurse at 18. I was taking care of people dying and I was watching birth. It's like I was so um, in search of, of something about the mystery. Yeah, mm. and I still am. Yes, sure. And so that, in that way, I was definitely searching, but I didn't know how that was going to arrive. I didn't know what it would look like, yeah. What was it in that ceremony that you first participated in around the fire that spoke to you um, more powerfully than whatever you had met previously? What, do, you, do you have any sense of why, why that particular occasion? Why, why the way that that was offered to you? Why did that speak to you so, so powerfully? Because it was a big, I mean, that was a, a massive turning point, I guess, or deepening point. You know, I can totally remember, and it makes me feel very emotional because um, it was at the end, and I can even remember the name of the woman. She was taking care of the cedar, and she picked up some feathers, and she started blessing the people. And I, I just remembered that I used to do that. Yeah. It was very profound and very simple, and that's why it felt like arriving home. Yeah. Okay, so that's what the other thing that was really struck me. You said that it felt so normal and so, so profound. So, and I do wonder if for many of us, this, this is it. You know, I often wonder at various talks, um, festivals and so on, when I speak about our ancient tribes here in Britain and who we were as a people once, you know, a few thousand years ago when we built our homes with their doorways facing the rising sun, you know, when all these different things there, I often have a feeling that people are remembering that there is something, something in all this that feels so much ours and has just been set down and set aside for a while. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And my experience of holding ceremonies is that um, often in the morning, people can be very emotional. And because they feel the longing that they've always felt in their life for village, for tribe, and they have this experience of touching that by sitting on the earth, watching a fire all night, praying together over the water, and they, it's like they feel bereft that it's not their living normal life. And that can be very profound and very healing and, and what, um, maybe a motivation to call back the things that we love and, and value so much, yeah. Yes. I thought I, I also wanted, as you spoke to begin with, to ask you, because I feel that it's it's really big for our for us for our society for women now and for men come to that when you said that it was unusual to give this ceremony to a woman I wonder if you could speak to that a bit I think um, the the red path the church of Itzechilatlan is a, a mixture of the North American in, in Indian teachings and the South American. And um, it was more normal for a road person to be male. They would travel to the different places and bring the altars. And um, the, their wife would accompany and take part in the ceremony and do lots of, they would work together like that, but it was a road man who mainly had the initiation. Um, and so, I don't know why I ended up in that place. Mm. You know, I think what Aurelio said is what he saw is that I had created a 
small family of people to come because I loved it and it, they were my friends. And so we prayed together, we would go to Vision Quest together. So what he saw was a family forming. And um, that was, who knows actually, because I'd been given a name through the tradition a few years ago and that name meant the woman who carries the medicines and I certainly didn't add up that that's what was coming you know somewhere it's just part of the walk I suppose mm. and there are a lot more medicine women now yes yes well it's really it's interesting I, I also wonder whether you know it's not like indigenous people are you know they are also going through a journey of becoming and um, and I, the people that taught me uh, were really strong on this saying that this is this is the time of the rebalancing of our earth and why they wanted Embukum dedicated to the goddess um, because even though I was a man as it were and, and, and holding um, that valley in those early days um, they were quite clear and that's why we have the stone at the top of our land dedicated to Mary Wollstonecraft as mm. you know a freedom fighter who fought for the rebalancing of our earth um, men and women um, I also of the various other indigenous teachers that have come Loretta afraid of Bear Cook who's a Lakota elder um, she holds she is the chief who holds uh, one of the Sundance ceremonies that I visited and um, and it didn't feel like anybody saw anything unusual in that thank goodness you know it was like it's like a normal thing mm -hmm. anyway I think for all of us there's a huge sigh of relief as this as this finds its way deeper and deeper and deeper so that um, we get away from some of the really rather awful imbalances that have been with us for so long. Mm -hmm. So um, I wonder also um, for people uh, and for myself come to that, but who are speaking about uh, when you speak about the red path to the extent that you know this, how is it different from any other of the sort of Native American North or South traditions? What is it that makes it a tradition or what is it that's specific? Are there any principles or teachings that are particularly specific to that, that way? Um, it draws on Lakota and all of those, basically the chief of this lineage of the uh, sacred father, fire of its Satchilatlan was was given bundles from the tribes in the north, Wallace Black Elk, that lineage, and then he went to the south of um, America, and many of the titers there recognized that he was the one that their prophecies had spoken of, that the eagle and the condor would come together, and in that moment there would be many people from all directions of all colors sitting around one fire and when that happened the medicine the memory that lives in the lands in the four directions comes forward which is another reason why fire really it was so important to spread the fire into many countries even though some indigenous people do not feel good about that happening understandably mm answer the question yes it did answer i'm just sort of um sorry i'm looking at my screen and trying to see whether um anyway don't worry i'm um yes so why did it why uh, i might have a sense of this but what could you say why it up, has upset some of the more traditional you know uh, people is it because the tradition is relatively young in one sense and is it's drawn on two and yeah. created a third or no no it's an ancient tradition i mean my other teacher in this lineage is uh, a woman from ecuador and she brings all the medicines from her own tradition 
into the red path. It, it's, um, I, I go to ceremonies where you'll have different medicine people coming to be part of it. It's much bigger than just a small river, if that makes sense. It's a very it's a word for a very, very extensive family among families across the earth. Mm. It has the sun dance and it has the moon dance and it has the vision quest and medicine ceremonies and the sweat lodge and the pipe ceremonies and the and probably more ceremonies because in a way Aurelio and Carmen, they both talk about that it's living, it's alive. They're still creating more ceremony within the principles of how how it's been passed down mm. well thank you for that i mean i was aware when i went to the um black hills in south, south dakota for the sundance ceremony held by loretta and her partner that it's of such a controversial uh, issue for many um native peoples is uh, people like ourselves participating in those ceremonies um, it's not even to do with the appropriation it's simply the fact of showing up and being there and for for many that is you know this that in itself is a, is a big issue uh, but referred back I can't remember I think I um, can't remember the name of the chief but from a uh, hundred and something years ago who spoke saying this the Sundance and all ceremonies of our that have been generated through our people are for all peoples of the world. The only caveat was, but they need to be done. These ceremonies that have originated from our people need to be done in using the protocols of our people. In other words, don't take the bits you like and just mash in whatever else you feel like. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Yes. Mm. Great. Um, Okay, so where are we with time here? 17 minutes. Um, I maybe some of the people listening will not be aware of the eagle and the condor prophecy. Is that something that you could share a little bit about? Mm, um, or, um, I don't know if I can. It's quite, um, it's more that the, the, North Americas was the eagle and South America was the condor. And it's to do, and I'm not gonna be able to remember all the names, with to do with the Mayan prophecies. Aurelio is a Mexican. And it's to do with the Mayan prophecies that when these two came together in one place, there would be the return of the ancient spirit of, he begins with T, but I can't remember it. I'm not very good at this bit of the, History. No, I don't think we need all the proper names, just the sense of it. Mm. But, but it's about, and it, it is about the being this, this way of being in as many lands as possible. And my, what Aurelia would say is that we've carried this, our people, the North and the South, we've carried this through lifetime after lifetime after lifetime, going to prison, dying for it, for this time, for all people, mm. and protected it. And for that, re and from my understanding is that to have this honor of being part of a lineage is that because it's been the same time after time, the way the ceremony is held, it creates an incredible safety and for me, it feels like I have a battalion behind me to lean back into, as long as I take care of the altar that's been pre presented to me to carry. Mm. Wonderful. That's a great, great way of expressing it. I can really feel that. Thank you. Um, so when we were um, had a, uh, connected a few days prior to this, and we were discussing what were how well, what was the content. We were, I think we were both sitting with what we'd received from uh, Rachel at Emcoom, and we were just talking through it. And I think uh, initially you were disinclined to um, share a ceremony online, not least perhaps because it felt so weird 
uh, to be doing it in this way. And so we closed our conversation and, and agreed something else. And, and then this morning, I think I had uh, received or last night received the email from you saying that you'd, you'd sat with this and now felt differently. So I wonder if you would like to, in whatever way or form that you wish to now, take us into the ceremony that you have in mind. Thank you, Matt. Yes. So the reason that I was very hesitant about doing a ceremony online is that my understanding of prayer is that it's not theater or performance, but it's responding to a moment. So prayer can happen on your own. You can feel moved by what's around you, your connections with everything around you, into song, which is a prayer, into word, which is a prayer, into a dance, which is a prayer. But it's about that meeting of the mystery that's around you. And so it's very, um, it's very sensitive. It feels very tender. And um, so I, and I certainly um, would imagine that my elders and teachers would say, no, that you don't pray online any more than you take a photograph in the middle of the ceremony. It's not to be precious, it's just that it's a moment that you don't wanna fix. You don't want this moment to be looked at or listened to out of context. It's a moment of connection, connecting with everything in the moment. And so that was why I was very hesitant about um, offering a prayer ceremony. And I really sat with it. Um, because I, I want to take care of the prayer. And I also really felt that it's something that I can offer in this time, that there isn't really an option of gathering together and sitting together. And so in that way, I'm really grateful that we have these, mach these machinery, that we have these, this possibility of connecting. And so I'm trusting that this is the right thing to do for my steps. And it's done really humbly and wanting to transmit an offering at this very extraordinary time. And we haven't had a time like this before. So, you know, maybe my elders, my teachers weren't able to tell us what we do. Everything's new and we have to be in your integrity and check. And so I would like to offer us. So I would like to invite everybody to join me in a prayer over the water. So I gathered this water today from the River Dart, a place where I visit regularly and really love. And the birds were singing and the water was freezing cold and the salmon were there and the trees are getting green and there were beautiful flowers, bluebells and wild garlic, primroses, spring was there, so beautiful. So bringing this water and all that this water was witnessing and honoring to make a prayer for the people at this time. So I'm gonna pray over this water and invite you to do the same. You can do it with me or you can do it afterwards. Um, and then when we finished, we're gonna take this water and offer it to the earth. And if you haven't got access, you haven't got a garden and you're not allowed out to your, to your plants, to yourself to drink a little bit, but take it as medicine. 
So I'm praying with tobacco that's seen as the sacred medicine of, of my people, my line, my path. And it's, I've put tobacco in here and it's got four ties and it's in a corn husk. And I'm gonna smoke my prayers with this tobacco. Great mystery, giving thanks for the fire in this tobacco and giving thanks for the presence of this water here on my little altar. Thank you water from, for coming to help the people, to help me at this time. Water, sweet water. Water of life, water of creation, water that comes from the stars and loves the earth and makes life. Water from the earth, from the rivers and the oceans. Water that's been here forever. Water that's so wise. Water that keeps flowing. Water, help us. Please help us in this time of not knowing. This time of pause, this time of waiting, this time of transition. Calling on your compassion water of light, water of life. Compassion for all those who are sick, all those who are frightened, all those who are lonely and isolated. Please bring cleansing, purification, help to all those people. Water of presence. Water that has no color and all colors. Water of wisdom. Help us to remember our wisdom at this time. Help us to remember every teaching we've ever received. Help us to remember all the instructions of how to be connected to ourselves in the deepest places. Help us in this moment with this water to send the very best of ourselves across the earth to the places that are dry and hungry and longing for connection. Water, take this prayer to those places through the ripples through the rivers, to the oceans. Asking in some way all the allies that are watching us, our ancestors, our beloved ones in the stars, all the light workers asking somehow they can work through us to dream a vision of good health, and honoring for our people. Really giving thanks for this time of dreaming, for this time of longing, for this time of remembering what we love to do, what we miss. Noticing how I miss the sound of the children laughing, how I'm sad to not see them playing outside, how important that is to me. 
how I miss the touch of my friends, how important they are to me, giving thanks so much for this extraordinary pause that helps us remember what we love and what is precious, giving thanks that it's an invitation to turn and to consider death and dying and how we want to do that in beauty. So I'm really sending a prayer in this moment to all those who are dying alone and in isolation. And I'm, I'm praying that you will be accompanied I'm praying that our prayers in this water is an offering of love and support to help you reach the place that you need to journey back to. And through this water, I want to say to all those who are suffering and have lost beloveds, that you're not forgotten, that we're thinking about you. We're feeling you and giving thanks in this time of slowing that we are given this opportunity to feel you more and think about you. Because there's always people dying. And often we don't take the time to remember them. So I give thanks for this opportunity. And I'm really praying somehow this water reaches the places it most needs to reach. And in some way, looking at this water and thinking of the water that we first knew, the water inside the wombs of our mothers, I'm praying for the children coming in. I'm praying for those spirits that they're really beautifully, softly received and their welcome is honored. In some way, I'm excited to know the beings that are coming in at such an amazing time. Thank you. Thank you for coming and sending courage to all the women birthing in this moment, praying that they will have at least someone supporting them, that they don't have to be in isolation. Sweet water. Please bring cleansing and purification and deep healing and renewal. Please help us to really honor our bodies, our health. Please help this to be a time of deep renewal. Like we see that's happening on the earth at this time, giving thanks for the clearer air and the cleaner water and the quietened road so that we hear the birds above the cars, giving thanks for this reminder, this invitation of all the beings coming back, the earth and all that's on her coming back as we're retreated, somehow seeing it's time for a rebalancing. So my prayer in this water is that the dreamers of this land, that we can dream beautiful dreams for the cultures, for the way we want to live, a way of being in harmony, a way of balance, a way of honor, a way of honor, honoring all the little moments of giving thanks that we live. May we dream courageously and outrageously. And may we have the courage to walk behind our dreams and step over our edges 
and stand tall and take up our eldership and in that way be a sky for our children and our young ones. This is a prayer for the young ones, for the teenagers at this time. Praying water, praying water, help us. Help us to be there for our young ones. Help us to be humble enough to tell them we don't know, but be willing enough to step forward. I want to honour this path that has given me a way to show my love for all that the earth gives us, for the elements, for the water, for the beauty. May we never feel like victims of our circumstances. May we know that always we can find some way of adding beauty to this life by being daring and loving and open and vulnerable. Through this water, I greet all of your ancestors, all of your guides, giving thanks that you've come and accompanied me in this prayer and you're making your prayers. Through this water, I greet all those who I know and all those I don't know. Giving thanks for this opportunity to pray at this time, to make an offering and in that way to feel purposeful that in some way we can help. We can help by offering ourselves in this mystery of life. Water of patience and stillness. Help us to drop, drop deep, drop deep into ourselves and find the stillness that lives in you and lives in us. Giving thanks for my life, giving thanks for this moment, giving thanks for this opportunity, and giving thanks for all the invisible hands that make this possible. Ahomitakiasin to all of my relations. Praying for all of your children, praying for all your mothers, your fathers on the earth and in the sky, and giving thanks for our lives. Blessings and peace. The ceremony is finished. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fiona. Um, thank you for uh, showing us that beautiful ceremony of honoring the water of life that uh, comes from the stars. As you said, it was very beautiful and very, very touching. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and to for agreeing to um, transmit this offering in this unique way. Um, I, uh, I'd love to see if we can um, have a look to, to get a more broad um, 
gallery view of who's available, who's been on the call. Um, it would be really lovely if we could all just in silence gesture and wave our acknowledgement and thanks to Fiona and to Mac for, for holding this space today. Is that, do you think we can do that? Let's see if we can figure it out. It would be really nice um, to sort of close in a group scenario. No? Oh dear, we are still figuring out the logistics of uh, this, this tech wonderland. So maybe we'll try next week. Um, where uh, our next uh, online offering will be with uh, Angara Dwin. Uh, she's a Welsh poet, author and storyteller in the uh, Brythonic tradition of the British Isles. And uh, she will be with us on Wednesday, next Wednesday at seven o'clock. And uh, she will be taking us on a, uh, talking about how we can witness and um, honor the grief that um, our collective is feeling at the moment and how to keep vigil um, at the thresholds of birth and death um, during this time of isolation. So thank you. Thank you again, uh, Fiona, and I hope you can all join us um, next week, Wednesday, for our next uh, online offering. Uh, please do subscribe to our newsletter. Um, if, you, if you haven't, uh, we'll be sending regular updates on, uh, on, on what we're making available online. So um, thank you very much uh, for joining. And thank you again to Fiona and to Mac. Thank <laughs> you.